Hello, the purpose of this video is just to demonstrate that we can get a USB audio device working with the O2 joggler here. The USB audio device in question is the Behringer UCA202 uh, audio interface sound card, call it what you want. Fantastic little device, we've got two phono inputs here for recording from and we've also got two phono outputs here which are line level volume controls. This little switch here is just a monitor switch, so if you were actually using this as a recording device, whatever comes in through the input phono would also be fed back out through your output, which, to be honest, I thought you'd really, that's something you'd probably want if you're actually recording. But never mind, it's not really relevant for our purposes anyway, since I'm not going to be using these to test. And over here we have an optical SP diff output here with the Toslink connector, 3.5mm headphone jack, and a volume control for the headphone jack. So. I just reflashed the joggler here back to the standard operating system and installed the plug and pimp Mark II modification on there. It's literally just finished uh, rebooting itself, reflashing itself. So I'm just going to load up the radio here just so we can make sure that all the sound is actually working. Let's go to National BBC stations and stick on Radio 1, much as I hate it. Buffering. Come on. 50 megabit internet and it still struggles to play a bloody radio station. Okay, uh, forget that. Let's load up the iPlayer instead. And let's go to BBC One. Probably going to be crap on it this time of day, but never mind. Buffering again. Okay, no idea what this is, but as we can tell, the sound is coming out through the standard speakers. It's just gone off. I think I've just mashed the screen somewhere, but never mind, it served its purpose. So let's just go back to the home screen. I'm going to shut this off now and plug in the USB audio device here. You can see I've still got the USB uh, USB stick in here from when I reflashed. So pop the camera down a second. Can't do this with two hands, unfortunately. Okay, yank that out. Plug in the sound card. And let's let it boot back up. I can find the power socket. There it is. Just need to let this reboot. Yeah, it takes a little while, so I'm not going to bore you with the boot process. I'm probably just going to fade out and fade back in, so bye. Okay, so we're now coming back into the stock, well, the stock operating system, I guess, for want of a better term. Any second now, it will come up with a blue screen, and we should hear the O2 splash noise. Nope, we hear no noise, which is a good sign because I haven't got anything plugged in here. Therefore, hopefully, the audio is being redirected here. So to test this, what I'm going to do, unfortunately, that I don't have a cable long enough to go from my table here over to my stereo over there. So I'm just going to plug in my Grado SR60i headphones here. Fantastic bit of kit, by the way. These are more than loud enough to be able to hear on the camera. So let's just plug those in a second. Okay, and let's load up the iPlayer again. Let's find that crap on BBC One, whatever that was. Away we go. And with a bit of luck, once the stream starts, should be able to now hear it in my headphones. Okay, and I'm getting absolutely nothing through my headphones. Which is a little bit worrying. Okay, so what I'm just going to test, I'm just going to fade the video out again in a moment so, so I can actually go and find a bloody cable that's long enough to reach my stereo so we can actually check whether or not it's working. Actually, scratch that. What we're going to do is stop that. Stop that, I said. 
go back to the main menu uh, back here again just to make sure let's open up the SWF launcher here open up the shell scripts and run the USB sound script let's just make sure I know the stock operating system is based on Ubuntu but it's very cut down very stripped down so okay let's try the iPlayer again one more time there we go come on 50 meg internet and yet it still takes forever aha there we go, let me just, I can now hear the sound coming through the headphones. Let me just crank up the volume a little bit. There we go. And if I turn the sound, actually I don't need to turn the sound right down, if I just yank the headphones out here, there's nothing coming through the external speakers on the joggler, which is great. So, what I'm also going to do here is just verify that the optical output works on here as well. Now, unfortunately, again, I don't have a lead long enough to go over, my st over to my stereo over there, but even if I did, my stereo has decided to throw its teddies out the pram when it comes to SPDIF inputs, and it goes all weird. So what I'm going to do instead is plug in the optical outputs to my mini disc recorder. Yes, I've still got one. You remember these things? but it does have an optical recording jack on here, the little white jack here, so I can just plug in some headphones here again just to verify that the sound does actually pass through. So I haven't got full hands, so I'm going to put the camera down again. Okay, so that's got everything plugged in there. I'm just going to start up my mini disc player. Try that again without the hold switch on. Pop it into recording mode if I can remember. Oh yes, there's the switch. So it's come up and said you probably can't see this. Let's see if I can zoom in. No, it's not going to let me zoom in. We have got an indicator on the uh, on the screen there. It's set up for synchronized recording. So unfortunately, whatever is on this disc, I'm going to be filling up with the soundtrack to this nonsense on the telly. So just to make sure that it does actually work, well prove that it does actually work, I'm going to plug in my headphones here and just whack up the volume a little bit again and yep I've got the audio output you can hear that through this rubbish microphone on this camera the SP diff output seems to be just fine Okay, so let's have enough of that crap. Okay, disconnect all my cables here. And what I just want to prove, just for my own purposes, is just to make sure that if we go back here and switch it back to internal sound. Again, nothing plugged into the audio card. We don't get any sound through the speakers, but it's still plugged in over USB. So let's yank that out. Yank the power and let it boot back up. I'll probably fade this egg out again because you really don't want to sit through waiting for it to boot. And my battery's dying. Crap. Hold on, little battery. Okay, so the screen's gone blank now, uh, meaning that we're just about to boot back into the operating system. Any minute now we should see the O2 splash screen. There we go, and the sound is now back working through the internal speakers. Probably a pointless test, I knew that would probably work anyway, but it just proves to me. So, to answer the question posed earlier on today, this does indeed work through USB sound and it, the headphone jack and the Toslink optical output work fine. If both those work I've got every confidence that the phono outputs here are going to work without a problem. Any questions drop them in the comments. Cheers guys.